evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Cambodia Global Dialogue. Global, the Cambodia Global Dialogue is a series of dialogue, of discussion, of exchange, of ideas, uh, perspective on Cambodia in the context of its role in the region and the world, where the intent is to discuss on issue where Cambodia is situated in the global and the regional context and how we can stimulate discussion with regard to the development of the Cambodian economy uh, as related to the implementation of the Royal Government uh, Rectangular Strategy. Today we have the pleasure to have as our special guest Mr. Mike Gildier who is the CEO uh, of Southeast Asia of a agility logistic. Agility Logistics is a global logistic company, integrate company, uh, with revenue exceeding eight billions of dollars. Their operation is uh, more than 120 countries worldwide. They are currently headquartered in Kuwait with, uh, and also in Switzerland. Agility Logistics is a used to be known as a public warehousing company in Kuwait until 2006 when they acquired more than 50 companies worldwide to rebrand to be a global uh, integrated logistic company. Mr. Mike Gilbert, uh, Gildier, Mr. Mike Gildier is currently the CEO of Southeast Asia operation. He used to manage the integration uh, aspect of the, the company. He used to be a management consultant with Accenture uh, before he moved to logistic. Uh, he held uh, numerous uh, high uh, position with the uh, uh, international company like uh, uh, UPS, APL, NOL, and UTI. Currently, he's based in Singapore and he's been uh, working and living in Southeast Asia since uh, the 1990s. So, again, Mike, a pleasure. Welcome to the Cambodian Global Dialogue. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Yes. Um, let me just uh, set the context that uh, why we are so happy to have you in, in, in our program. Uh, as you probably know, having an operation in Cambodia, that uh, the royal government of Cambodia, under the leadership of some like prime minister, yes. has been on the forefront to push Cambodia to open up its economy by joining the WTO, uh, by being a full-fledged member of the ASEAN, uh, in the context of the sub-regional of the Greater Mekong sub-region. You know, uh, some like prime minister has been pushing this uh, uh, so-called uh, economic liberalization trade integration so uh, that we are able to develop uh, the country and to generate growth through integration. Uh, we are also mindful that uh, in, in the context of this uh, regional integration, the issue of uh, logistics is very important, uh, not only from the context of moving goods, but for the Royal Government of Cambodia, we felt that uh, to be competitive, we have to be able to export. And to export, we have to be able to produce. But producing, exporting in itself doesn't mean anything if we're not competitive. Uh, in, in this context, maybe I would want to clarify <laughs> out, out uh, the get-go, this confusion that people always have between uh, are you uh, transporting or your logistic. So maybe you, you may want to just demystify this. Uh, right, right. Yeah. I think that's, that's a very good question. Uh, let, me, let me sort of step back a little bit and explain where this whole concept of uh, logistics and supply chain management actually came from. If we sort of go back in, in history a little bit, uh, the last 30 odd years, um, we saw very much uh, an industry, a transportation industry, that was essentially uh, vertical. Um, we saw trucking companies, we saw those companies providing domestic distribution, we saw freight forwarding companies providing forwarding services for air and ocean, import and export. And we saw customs brokerage houses. And over time, these came together to provide services from one source to customers. So international freight, uh, customs brokerage, and domestic transportation. And many companies had to use these to get their goods to market. The industry then developed, and the same companies began to enjoy contracts from multinationals for their warehousing yep, and their storage. Yep. Again, over time, from the same providers as transportation. So now we're beginning to move from a more transactional play to a more integrated solution play. So the transport, 
the brokerage and the warehousing. And over time, because companies like to outsource more and more, because those providers can, at least because of scalability, do it cheaper, we saw more value-added services, more kitting, more configuration, again, all from one single company. So now we see essentially a move to a total solution value proposition in the market. And then with this became the word logistics and supply chain management. So it evolved from basic transportation through to quite sophisticated logistics services and supply chain management. Logistics, therefore, has been a term that misused, to be honest with you, in many, many countries. We saw uh, uh, companies that were pure transportation companies suddenly overnight put logistics yeah. in their tagline. Yeah. That's a little bit uh, misleading because really logistics is all about offering a solution with a clear value proposition to the customers. Uh, thanks, Mike. Uh, <clears throat> Cambodia, we, for the last 10 years or so, we've been growing exponentially in the area of our garment export. Uh, but we see that with the global economic crisis, uh, garment have uh, uh, slowed down a bit. But we see in the recent year the emergence of uh, the uh, export of uh, the production of agricultural commodity like rice like corn and many other agricultural commodity we we felt that uh, to to move agricultural commodity which is quite heavy bulky uh, very difficult to to package uh, this required you mentioned uh, sort of like a solution uh, as compared to the garment industry how do you see Cambodia restructuring its uh, logistic industry so that we can provide a solution you know, for, to, to move all this agricultural uh, commodity out of the country. Okay, I think uh, first of all we need to look a little bit as to why is the right time to do that and I know that the, the, the investment has gone into those sectors um, but why, why uh, is it necessary to mobilize now? Um, because I think there's a window opportunity here. I mean, we, we've seen uh, many manufacturers over the last 20 years moving to China. Um, this, of course, has proved successful, but the cost base was a little bit expensive. And so those same producers, those same manufacturers, looked for alternative strategy, a China plus one strategy. And so they moved to other countries in, in, uh, in the region. That has also been successful. But the problem is this, that often those other neighboring countries, actually to Cambodia, didn't have the infrastructure to support those manufacturers that moved there. And that infrastructure is essentially roads, developed ports, airports, customs clearance, abilities, etc. So I think when anybody talks about logistics, there's certain prerequisites that have to be in play. Yep, yep. And if they are not there, then it's going to be very, very difficult okay. to get goods to market. That's the first point. Uh, I think these, these prerequisites fall into, into basic areas. One is connectivity. Mm. You need connectivity in terms of roads, yeah. you know, rail, yeah. as well as the development of ports to get your product to market. And with connectivity goes the ability, therefore, to ship products out. Now, in Cambodia today, highly reliant on uh, secondary ports and transshipments yes. across the world. So therefore, the lead time is a bit long. Yes. We need to shorten this in order to get the products to market faster. Yes. I think we need, therefore, to also look at the infrastructure, to look at the quality of the roads, for instance. Yes. We need to look at the education, the ability of people with skill sets to deliver solutions to move products out. We need to look at border administration, how customs can be improved, essentially. Yes. Uh, and, and the various areas, but these are the main ones that will drive the flow of goods leaving the country and allow you to be an exporter. In the context of regional uh, Cambodia in ASEAN, Cambodia in the GMS, where Cambodia is a small country with 14 uh, million people, uh, but you have Vietnam, a neighbor, 80 million. Yeah. You have Thailand, 70 million. Country are trading. Goods are moving from one country to the other. Cambodia is, is uh, privileged in, in this peace process to be caught in between two economic uh, trading power. So in this sense, 
how do you see Cambodia positioning itself? And uh, in other words, how do Cambodia position itself so that it can be a catalyst of uh, the, the cross-border flow between these, uh, these two larger countries? And ultimately, of course, with China as, as being a major you know, uh, player in these uh, regional dynamics. I think the positioning is, is important because, as I said, now is the time we see we see companies looking for places to manufacture. We've seen that China is too expensive. We see companies have gone into Vietnam. But actually, the cost of the infrastructure, the delays infrastructure, is negating the labor arbitrage that, uh, that they enjoyed um, when they thought they were going to go there. So Cambodia is well positioned hmm. to actually say, yes, we, we can attract more foreign direct investment. You can come here and manufacture. No problem about that. Um, and I think now is the time. You cannot wait hmm. because these developments are happening quite fast and therefore I think it's vital that Cambodia is a leader in ASEAN now because by 2015 it will be a common market already in place. So I think now is the time to mobilize. So now is the time to, to essentially look at what needs to be in place, what infrastructure needs to be in place. And this may involve working with the private sector to develop, for instance, uh, the, the ports and the airports. Let me give you an example. Today, um, the capacity in uh, Cambodia's airports is quite limited for export. I think the, the maximum that can be exported on a monthly basis is around 120,000 uh, tons per month. That's not so much. That's not so much, yeah. Um, so, what does that mean? And of course you've got garment factories already producing and we want more production to come into Cambodia. So how are we going to move this out? Well, we can develop our infrastructure and our airports and to do that, we need to attract more uh, international carriers because at the moment we have a few carriers serving the airports here and their equipment, their air planes are quite small, mm -hmm. they're 737s, they do not take much capacity for cargo and hence the constraint. Alternatively, we can look at cross-border solutions and this is also very, uh, very powerful. We can begin to truck product across into Vietnam and we can use uh, Ho Chi Minh, for example, as the point of departure. But then we need to look at our border administration mm -hmm. and how is this going to work? Because today, this is quite cumbersome, I referred already to, to customs issues, to customs clearance delays, uh, to cost of, of, of doing that. But also the whole transloading, because when goods arrive at the Vietnamese border, I think uh, one point is at Bave, uh, you need to remove the product from one truck on one side of the border mm. and put them on to another truck on the other side of the border because you can't have the two trucks going across the border by one truck. So this is inefficient. Okay. And we know in logistics that the more handling points there are, the higher the possibility for problems, for loss of product, for shrinkage and missing a lead time. So I've talked about, I've talked about the airports, I've talked about the roads, and I think the seaports also need to be looked at. Um, Cambodia today is high rel reliant on using barge services to other ports and then transshipment through Singapore and uh, Hong Kong essentially. This adds lead time and cost. So the average, this in fact adds about 25% of cost of shipments to the United States. That's not possible with a low value product. So that we need to reduce the logistics costs as well as improve the infrastructure. And that's the challenge. You mentioned uh, something that is quite important that if Cambodia as a member of ASEAN, if we are to position ourselves as a player that can uh, benefit from uh, this integration is through the ability for Cambodia to attract FDI in uh, manufacturing or eventually high tech. Uh, in, the, in the area of high tech, you you dealing with the, the 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 difficulty of moving this uh, this uh, product this high tech product mm. by air uh, is that what you're saying? Um, well, you need more capacity in the air to, to move it, and and your neighbours have found this where we've seen major semiconductor companies moving into geographies, and there just isn't the capacity in the market to move out the product. Yes. So what happens? I mean, this is you know I think valuable because you can learn from these lessons. Yes. How to increase the capacity and attract the manufacturers to come here and ensure and, be, and they will be ensured that they can move their product out to their markets. This is key. Uh, I see another 
strong potential in Cambodia uh, uh, fishery. As you, you know, Cambodia have the largest uh, freshwater yep. lake in Southeast yep. Asia, and uh, the, the the fish are good, are tasty. It's been uh, exploited, uh, export out, but. I would say that it's not at its uh, uh, optimum, uh, uh, you know, capacity because we don't have the, the capacity to uh, transport and refrigerate that sort of thing. Uh, uh, what is your idea on uh, the coal? Uh, the coal chain distribution. Coal chain distribution. Yes. It's, what it's, does it take? I mean, well, how can we develop that that uh, ex uh, fishery uh, export industry? Let me first of all give you an example on coal chain. Um, again, a country in Southeast Asia. Um, Actually, it happens to be our customers. Right? But, um, they are in the wholesale business. So they deliver a lot of fresh goods uh, in domestic uh, supermarkets across the country. Now, the local players in, in logistics, in, in, in trucking, they do not have the capability to deliver this. Yeah. And so, because of mainly cost, I think, and we did, uh, you have to rely on a external foreign provider. So here I'm talking about the role of the private sector. Yes. To bring in the technology, and in this case the trucks, we brought in the trucks 14, in fact, chiller compartment trucks which could supply the supermarkets with fresh food on a daily basis. Uh, that's very expensive. So the private sector has to step up and do it. No two ways about it. Because only in that way can you deliver fresh food to the supermarkets with very little shrinkage, with hardly any shrinkage. So this is key. You've got to work with the providers on what needs to be done. But of course the providers are not going to make these kind of investments in high technology vehicles if the roads and the infrastructure can't handle it mm. because it will fail. Yes. So it's a combination, it's a partnership with the private sector as well as government. Yes. Because government only can really drive infrastructure in terms of ports and roads for example. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going a little bit further in, in the, again in this uh, notion of uh, Cambodia expanding its, uh, its, its market, but not only in the outside, but the inside you see an increase, a gradual increase of uh, the, the Cambodian middle class, yes. where you see now in different part of town, uh, shopping center, uh, retail space, and we expect that in a, in a very near future there'll be you know, a supermarket the size of uh, the type of a uh, uh, big supermarket in a neighboring country. Uh, and you also see a trend of, uh, of franchise, food franchise company moving to Cambodia. You see KFC, yep. you see a uh, uh, pizza company. These are companies that require uh, sort of like a very steady uh, supply logistics. Absolutely. Uh, in this context, what Oh, chicken or, or, or egg first, you know? Do, do we need to get our logistic in place first before we're able to attract them? Or how can they also dictate the logistic requirement also? In, in your experience, how, how does it work? Well, I mean, some countries, first of all, attracted these manufacturers uh, with good incentives, tax incentives, tax holidays. And so, yes, the, the, the manufacturers moved into those countries. But if the infrastructure is not there, how can they ramp up? How can they export? They, they can't. Yes. Okay. So from my experience, it is easier and better to put the infrastructure in place first. And I guarantee you, because of market force, they will come. Mm -hmm. They will come. They have to come because cost bases in the likes of China is forcing more manufacturers to move into Southeast Asian countries. And we're seeing that. Mm. But if they do it without the necessary infrastructure, then it's not going to work. Yes. You mentioned something quite interesting uh, because uh, we I used to negotiate the uh, Cambodian accession WTO. We we work quite uh, a bit on the service issue, on tax issue, yeah. incentive. Yeah. Uh, the, the the notion of logistic is a service uh, provider. Logistic is not like you you open a factory, you produce good where in the investment law yeah. is quite clear cut in terms of these are the fiscal incentive, yes. you know, uh, non-fiscal incentive for this sort of uh, production facility investment. But service is quite uh, a little bit uh, the, the, the uncertain aspect. What is service? Uh, what does service qualify? And I think this is something that uh, we would have to think quite a bit more in the yes. context on how do we treat service uh, company in the context of uh, providing incentive, whether fiscal or non-fiscal, so that we make 
the, 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 their investment to the country Absolutely. because in attracting FDI in physical infrastructure or in production infrastructure is not enough. Yeah. You need a whole service industry. And this is where I think we, we, we need a little bit more uh, clarity as, as how the service industry operate. And yeah. how do you see in the experience of other country, uh, service company being treated in terms of uh, incentive, for example? Um, well, other countries, they, they do incentivize. They give quite long tax holidays in, in general. Um, and they promote a, a climate of investment. So the provider will invest in assets, be it warehousing or, or fleets of trucks, etc. I think in Cambodia, it's much easier to set up a garment factory uh, with the associated taxes than it is for a logistics provider to set up here. Mm. And I think this is something you really must address. Okay, so so mainly because of the 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 uh, sort of like unclarity of the the, the investment law, the the tax yes. uh, structure, right? Yeah, exactly, the tax and the customs. The I customs see. need to be. Okay. A little bit simplified and faster, okay. because then you can import and export yes. faster. Yes. But I was reading, um, you know, uh, a global trade index, uh, the enabling trade from the World Economic Forum, and um, this covers essentially border administration, market access, transport, communications infrastructure, and general business environment. Yes. And out of 125 countries, mm. Cambodia in 2010 came mm. number 102. Now, last year it was mm. number 91. Mm. So something's not going in the right direction. Yes, yes. And we need to identify very quickly mm. what is going in mm. that wrong direction mm. and, and correct it. Yeah. Because the window opportunity is limited. Yes. You need to have all this in place by at least 2015. 2015. And I would, argue, yeah. I would argue now, because I see, I see Cambodia surrounded by countries um, that are less stable. Let's face mm. it, mm. Cambodia is one of the most stable geographies in Southeast Asia and I think that's great because that's another criteria where investors look at when they want to put their money into countries. Yeah. yeah. So now we need to look at what is going wrong today mm. and, and correct it. Mm. Uh, Investment, FDI, it's great, uh, but we also see the emergence of a uh, strong national company, uh, young entrepreneur moving into the, the business uh, uh, aspect. Uh, and this is one of the hope that I, I see in, in Cambodia is that you see an emergence of a new generation of business entrepreneurs, Western trained, Western influenced, Western educated, uh, partnering with the uh, big multinational, uh, you know, like company like yourself. Uh, where in the area of logistics, where do you see the area of opportunity for investing in the, 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 this, this whole uh, supply or value chain? Yeah. Well, as I said earlier, there's, there's quite a number of prerequisites that I, believe, that I believe need to be in place. But perhaps one of the most important is education. Yes. We need on the ground trained logistics personnel. Yes. This is why uh, Singapore has been quite successful. Mm -hmm because education is quite high on, the, on, on their ranking. So we need to put in place institutions that can teach and train people in the art of logistics and yeah. the skill set of logistics. Mm -hmm. That's key. Yes. And this is the role of the universities to do that. Yes. So that's one area I would say, education. Infrastructure, I've talked about. Uh, technology also mm -hmm. is a key thing. Many manufacturers globally, they spend millions and millions of dollars on research and development. What they don't want mm. when they get to their end market is to throw those products on the back of a truck and not have a clue mm. where they are. Mm. No visibility into where they are actually being moved because it results in delays, loss of information because that is very bad because they cannot tell their customers where their products are and high levels of shrinkage. Mm. So we term it in the industry a track and trace mechanism. How do we put one of those in place so you can see at the press of a button on a laptop where your product is at any given time. These are the sort of things that need to be in place to attract really the higher end manufacturing bases that you need. You mentioned track and trace, it's yeah. quite interesting because in the context of the, the fight uh, uh, against terrorism, yeah. you know, in the post September 11 uh, uh, crisis, uh, the, the, the whole issue of uh, security is, is quite prominent yeah. uh, in the uh, in in the mind of uh, many of the big uh, you know importing country. Yeah. Uh, it, what do you see the challenge for 
uh, Cambodia being a, a, a small uh, exporter in a relative term, uh, how, how are we going to tackle you know, this issue uh, to be part of this, this, uh, this whole uh, supply chain without being hampered one day to say, look, Cambodia, you cannot uh, ship your good out because you did not meet the security you know, parameter imposed by, in this case, the US port or European port, for example. Well, I think it comes back to being a part of how these decisions are taken and how these policies are put in place. And that means really contributing to the logistics community and saying what you think needs to be done. And there's various security measures that have been put in place. That's the first point. So not only contributing to, to, to the new ones, the next ones that are coming online, but also enforcing the ones that are already in place. And so I come back to enforcement, to, 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 to visibility, to transparency, and strong border administration. Border, and, sure, and when sure. I said earlier about transloading on the borders, yeah. moving products manually from one truck to another, that doesn't increase mm -hmm. the confidence mm -hmm. of, of a manufacturer if one has to do that, because yeah. you haven't got the security yes. measures in place. Yes. Well, Mike, I, I think we, we touched quite a bit on the uh, issue of infrastructure, on uh, the, the soft skill of education. We touched a lot on security issue. Uh, in your experience uh, working for this uh, big multinational in integrated, uh, that's, that's the word, integrated uh, logistics solution, uh, what is some of your thought that you've been operating in Cambodia for a while? Uh, yeah. What do you see, you know, the challenge of Cambodia and how what are some of your ideas uh, uh, that you could share and hopefully you know some of the the uh, uh, a Cambodian uh, logistic company uh, transport company they could learn from they could be inspired and eventually they, they, they could invest and grow to support the development of this country that's a good question I think you know as I've said speed is of the essence we need to play catch-up a little yes. bit and I said as I've said also surrounding countries are not as stable as yes. we've seen in the last yes. few months. Yes. So now is the time, now is the window to really, to really uh, drive logistics forward. Mm. What can be done? Well, I think essentially we can look at the road infrastructure. We can look at, as a, as a low-hanging fruit, I believe, to address customs processes and how do we modernize that and make it more transparent. Yeah. And that obviously is top-down okay. and enforcement. We can look at the quality of vehicles, and I'm not talking world class, but if we look at the average vehicle here, it's a little bit old yes. and could be improved. We can look at the quality of warehouses that are in play today. Yes. They also can be, I think, improved. And we can look at technology. Technology. Yes. How do we give basic internet services, mm -hmm. because the internet penetration in Cambodia is relatively low compared to your yeah. neighbors. Yeah. How do we do that and give multinationals the comfort that they can see where their products are mm. at any given time and that also means that the local players have to adopt certain international practices mm. and okay. I would suggest the best way they do that is to work with the international providers because yes. they can help them develop faster than if they were to do it themselves yes so here again is boiled down to partnership it does indeed uh, partnership how how we can grow by adopting best practice, yes. uh, lesson learned from company who have tried different parts of the world already. And uh, I think in this context, uh, I see the opportunity you know, for uh, many Cambodian uh, company, young entrepreneur, to start considering investing in logistics as one of their uh, uh, area of, of growth. It, it is uh, high growth. Yes, it is high yes. growth. So y you do think that the future you know, uh, logistic is an area of high growth. I, I do, and let me tell you why yes. I think that. Because companies want to concentrate on their core competency, what they do best. And that is often manufacturing or research and development. They don't want to be focusing on transportation. That's why they want to outsource it. They want to outsource the storage, and they want the provider to be able to handle value-added services, kitting, configuration, relabeling, repackaging. They don't want the headache of all of that. Yes. They want to concentrate on research and development because that's their core competency. Now the economic model that drives logistics is very simple. The value proposition. If you outsource your operations to a provider, essentially you should see as a corporation your revenue grow. Mm, yeah. Why? Because yeah. that provider yeah. is yep. going to deliver yep. on time and on target. Mm. Mm. Hence your market share should, okay. on paper, yeah. increase. Your costs of goods sold should decrease because that provider has something that a manufacturer doesn't have, scale. Yeah. He can do more with the same workforce, 
because he's actually essentially delivering scalability to the customer. Yeah. Okay, so your profit therefore goes up. If we look at the other side of the equation, assets. Current assets today sit on manufacturers' balance sheets. They don't want them. They would actually like a logistics company to handle their current assets, collect their receivables for them. Yes. And this actually happens in some parts of the world today. So the current assets is moved off the balance sheet. They don't want fixed assets on their balance sheet because that's very costly, right? They want to move these fixed assets into variable assets and pay for what they need. Mm. And the provider can do that because the provider has the assets and controls the assets yes. often. Yeah. So essentially, you're, you're optimizing your, your assets as a, as, a, as, a, as a customer of a logistics provider and you're seeing higher profit. That's the value proposition. And that results in higher economic value added, the cost of the capital yes. versus the return. Yes. And that's the ultimate benchmark of how a stock, how a share is valued. Mm. So essentially, logistics drives every element of a business and drives its financial performance. So logistics can you know, be uh, a strong uh, contribution to Cambodia competitiveness, Absolutely. Cambodia uh, growth. Uh, maybe I can uh, say that... It's uh, a differentiator. It, it, yeah, it's a differentiator, you know, between, you know, growing normally for, and growing exponentially. Absolutely. Yes. Great. Well, Mike, I, I think we, maybe we, we can conclude and wrap up uh, a session um, uh, by saying that uh, logistics, not just transport, logistics is a sector that have a tremendous potential for high growth. Logistics is a, a sector that can play the, the, the difference between normal growth and uh, high growth. Uh, Investing in logistics is quite uh, fruitful or productive because, you know, if you're an area that, uh, uh, you know, benefit from high growth, uh, your, your rate of return, your shareholder will be quite happy. Uh, and in this context, we, we could assume that, you know, for a Cambodian entrepreneur company who are thinking to uh, plow their, their, their hard-earned saving into investing, uh, for the betterment of Cambodia future, logistics should be one of the considerations. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Good. So, so that takes care of the, the investment side. Going back to the theme of our, our, our global Cambodia Global Dialogue, I'm glad to say that you know, Cambodia has benefited tremendously from uh, trade openness. Uh, up to now, we have been growing uh, in, in a very healthy uh, uh, growth, but I would say that with the right policy, you know, uh, restructuring in the area of uh, border management, border control, trade facilitation, uh, custom automation, uh, we should see a, an increase in efficiency. And hopefully this increased efficiency in the logistic uh, uh, and trade automation side could lead to high employment, uh, better employment, uh, better attraction of FDI and uh, as a result, uh, increase of job and reduction of poverty. And Absolutely. that's basically what uh, the, the, the goal and the objective that uh, this, uh, the Royal government under the leadership of uh, something like Prime Minister has been pushing so hard all this year is creation of job uh, through uh, good employment, through securing new source of right. growth. Right. And I would say that uh, uh, in, in the area of new source of growth, like uh, pushing the rice export, uh, the fishery export, the agricultural commodity as a new source of growth, uh, logistics should play a big role in this part. Absolutely. So, any Absolutely. last word, Mike? Yes, I, but I, I, I really would stress that now is the time. Now is the time to do this. Because we see the development of ASEAN, we see what other countries have done well and not so well. We can learn from that. And I believe manufacturers are looking for a new market uh, across all sectors to go into. But first has to come the infrastructure. Yes. And that's where you need, I think, the focus. And I believe that the international providers can assist you and work with the local providers in order to deliver the solutions that need to be in place. So when those manufacturers arrive, the logistics solutions are essentially working, operational, and I think highly effective. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for stopping Thank by uh, to, uh, to uh, be part of this uh, program. And uh, on behalf of the Cambodian audience uh, and the, the, the management here, let me thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank, yes, you. thank you. Thank you. Yes.